Yeah. Yeah. So let me just do this one just because it's, uh, you know, more of a kind of standard strategy vibe in the sense that there's a more uh, kind of fixed set of steps that I ought to follow. <laughs> um, whereas sometimes with the kinetic theory of guess, it can be a little bit uh, unpredictable what it is I might have asked. <laughs> um, so, so yeah, let's do this one. So uh, uh, actually, I should have this ready. Um, so I'm going to try to do this as a demonstration, uh, as um, sort of the <laughs> both to uh, demonstrate the logistics of how this works, and um, and to kind of show at least the, you know one of the questions that uh, would uh, one potential question <laughs> that might look like what you would see. So, uh, so I'm going to start, and 20 minutes, it's a fairly tight amount of time, even for me. So um, within the 20 minutes, I, would, uh, I might not be explaining a lot. Uh, I'll just fo get focused on just uh, producing the answers. And if necessary, I will come back and uh, fill in some of the gaps after the, those 20 minutes. 20 minutes is a tight amount of time. Like even me, I don't have a lot of time to waste explaining. So I'll start. I look at the clock so that I know what to watch out for. And go. Uh, and same rules as multiple choice, you know, open book, no outside help, and so on. Uh, the one thing that's different, it's only one attempt. Because things that's manually graded, like multiple attempts, are annoying to deal with. Uh, annoying for me, <laughs> probably not for you. <laughs> annoying for me. Um, okay. And, and actually, one issue I've had in the past, I used to give two attempts, but then I would say that whenever people got a different, difficult question, they wouldn't even attempt it. They would just retry to get an easier question. When I saw that, I said, oh, I can't, I gotta limit it to one attempt. Uh, so, uh, okay, I got Carnot cycle here. Yeah. Uh, a, B, C, D, occur isothermally, and should be local relating to the Carnot cycle. Okay, might be one of the easier questions. <laughs> um, yeah, good. I think I understand the question. In the case of a reversible Carnot heat engine, its efficiency takes the simple form of yeah, that. In the space below, briefly explain or yeah, how this comes about. How does the uh, um, okay, so. I think I've uh, demonstrated this in, um, in the lecture, I actually did it backward. We actually um, kind of started out with the, um, so the efficiency of a heat engine in general is given by efficiency is equal to work done divided by the heat transfer at the high temperature. Now this can be, um, simplified into this form, QH minus QL divided by QH uh, using a first law um, to say the work done on a cycle is QH minus QL or you know, conservation of energy. Um, and in the lecture, we did it the other way, meaning um, we, want, we were trying to introduce the idea of entropy. And in order to introduce entropy, we are looking for some kind of state function. And, uh, and, and that's how we went. The kind of the answer here would be to go the other way, which is um, um, we already know for uh, reversible processes, uh, we have that change of entropy is equal to amount of heat transfer divided by the temperature. And in the case of Carnot cycle, uh, heat transfer happens only along isotherms. Uh, isotherms up here and down here. It's really nice because all along the adiabatics, no heat transfer, so no change of entropy. So, uh, so we can say uh, that um, the change of entropy at the uh, uh, high thermal reservoir where heat's coming in, so entropy is increasing, you have a uh, plus QH over TH. Uh, and also we can say the change of entropy at low temperature reservoir along this side of therm. Now heat is leaving the system, so change of entropy is negative there. The engine is becoming 
less disordered. Um, uh, here's QL divided by TL. And because this is, uh, well, not because it's reversible, but because this is a cyclic process, uh, delta SH plus delta SL is equal to zero. Meaning um, QH over TH is equal to QL over TL. Uh, this is where it's nice to notice this thing. Um, so this expression for uh, efficiency, you can express it in terms of uh, ratios of uh, heat transfers. So if you imagine dividing by QH, uh, both the top and bottom, numerator and denominator, then on the numerator, after distributing it through, it becomes 1 minus QL over QH. Uh, and on the denominator, it becomes 1. Oh, so there's no denominator anymore. So I have a 1 minus QL over QH as a equivalent expression for the efficiency uh, of any engine. And now uh, once we say efficiency of a, of a carnoid heat engine, then we can use this expression that we derived above. That, um, or actually I need to go one more step. Just moving them around so that uh, QL is on that side and TH is on this side, then it's gonna be QH over QL is equal to TH over TL. This ratio is uh, oh, reciprocal of that. <laughs> so I can put in reciprocal of this in that place. So it's a one minus TL over TH. And uh, that is uh, the expression for the Carnot heat, Carnot cycle. Oh, and uh, let me just make sure. Yeah, T1 is greater. So I'll just say uh, TH is my T1 there and TL is uh, the T2 there. So that's it. Uh, I guess yeah. Question like this one, there wouldn't be an additional work because you are because you are explaining things in words. So yeah, what you uh, submit here will be work and answer um, <laughs> compared to real world heat energy cycles. Uh, for example, yeah, diesel cycle. You know, I sort of mentioned sure that Carnot engine will be more efficient than the other. Uh, I'll briefly explain below. Um, so yeah, so I'm just gonna type everything in here. Um, so these are easy to answer using entropies. So um, be because heat engines operate on cycle, uh, change of entropy net is zero over that cycle. Uh, entro oh, sorry. Entropy is a state function. I also uh, irrationally don't like the word the state function, like close the system, isolate the same state function. If you want to see me wins, like those are the words to use. Um, <laughs> sorry, I just don't like those words. I don't have a good reason why, I just don't like them. <laughs> Over the cycle, uh, meaning uh, whatever increase in uh, entropy uh, through uh, heat input, um, delta S is positive uh, uh, with the, the Q high input at high temperature reservoir has to be um, a depo dis disposed of um, uh, th of a uh, th uh, decrease of entropy that takes place uh, extra comma uh, uh, takes place with uh, heat output uh, delta s um, is negative with a QL output at low temperature reservoir so we want the heat input to take place at the highest possible temperature minimizes uh, delta S equal to Q over T. If T is high, that means delta S is small. And we want the heat output to take place at the lowest possible temperature. Uh, maximizes uh, absolute value of delta S. Um, 
q over t. Uh, so when we when this thing is negative, we want its magnitude to be as large as we can make it. So that's what we want to make things uh, make the heat engine as theoretically efficient as possible. Uh, Carnot heat engine cycle accomplishes that because all the heat transfer occurs um, along isotherms, representing the highest possible temperature and the lowest uh, possible temperature. For all other heat engine cycles, uh, those are based that um, basically do not connect the uh, two isotherms with the two adiabatic curves. Because if they do, they are kind of cycles. If they don't, it's something else. <laughs> um, heat transfer occurs over a range of um, over a range of temperatures. So whenever heat input occurs at a temperature lower than the highest possible, extra entropy uh, increase occurs, reducing efficiency. And when, whenever heat output occurs at a temperature, uh, at a temperature greater than the lowest possible, um, uh, uh, additional heat output is necessary to get rid of the entropy increase increase uh, from earlier, uh, also reducing efficiency. So, um, so, uh, so the arrangement of isotherms isothermal processes and adiabatic processes, uh, adiab uh, adiabatic processes that ensure no heat transfer at temperatures, at, at non-ideal temperatures, non-ideal temperatures, uh, ensures uh, the most uh, uh, efficiency achievable given the two extreme, uh, given the two uh, thermal reservoirs above. I think, yeah, let's leave that there. And, uh, eight minutes. Uh, do I need to go faster? Possibly. Um, yeah. Okay, um, the cycle can be reversed to form a heat pump or refrigerator cycle coefficient given by that, right? Coefficient of given by that, okay. Um, oh, um, yeah, to the, uh, the difference comes down to a difference of what we want. Uh, in ge general efficiency or coefficient of performance is the ratio, what we want divided by what we pay. Uh, for uh, for heat pump, what we want is QH, heat input into the high temperature reservoir. Uh, so the coefficient of uh, performance for heat pump is QH divided by work. Uh, and going through um, the usual derivation gives the expressions shown. For uh, refrigerator, what we want is QL, that is heat removed from the low temperature reservoir. So coefficient of performance for refrigerator is equal to QL over W. And going through the usual derivation, yeah, gives the expressions as shown. So that's really the difference. I mean, uh, there isn't any other <laughs> profound difference than that. It, it's the, the goal for those two uh, devices are different. Okay, question six. I think this is actually one of the easier questions. So if you get this question, you are lucky on two counts. One, you got the easier question. 
to uh, uh, use semi-duet. <laughs> um, so this one uh, is probably the one uh, tricky question because uh, a lot of times people think uh, so because a real kind of he found that involves the original for here, you know, how this change resulted in reduced equipment performance for the hip hop. Explain words as you could. Uh, oh, wait. Wait, this isn't tricky. Uh, I used to have a different version of the question that was tricky, but it wasn't this one. Um, so uh, let me do the text version and I'll draw the, um, the PV diagram. I think I have enough time to do that if I don't waste so much time and exceed my five minutes. So the explanation for the would be so uh, just uh, considering uh, the coefficient of performance for a heat pump in general is um, the heat transfer into the high temperature reservoir divided by work done. Right. Or um, um, yeah. So for um, um, for a real kernel pump involving irreversible, uh, uh, so this. Um, which in case of uh, reversible kernel heat pump is equal to QH over QH minus QL. This is not the irreversible part. The irreversible part is where I uh, change Qs into Ts. <laughs> TH divided by TH uh, minus TL. Uh, for a real kernel pump, involving irreversible transfer of heat, the achievable coefficient, coefficient of performance is lower. Um, I guess this is the, you know, uh, I think I have the time, three minutes. Yeah, so it, it's a better <laughs> drawn on figure than explained in words. Imagine this PV diagram. And let's say you have access to two isotherms. The high temperature reservoir isotherm and the low temperature reservoir isotherm. So your, your um, Carnot pump is moving along the uh, Point, moving between the points here. So I'm trying to do it the opposite. So uh, for a heat pump, uh, you would, let's say, start from here, go through isothermal contraction, um, doing the outside doing work on the system, and then it'll go undergo adiabatic expansion, expanding, and then it'll do isothermal expansion, expanding, and then adiabatic compression, bringing it back to the original point. So, um, so your thermal uh, reservoir temperatures are the same as your engine reserve engine temperatures. When you have irreversible transfer of heat, what that forces you to do is instead of the engine being right at the temperature of the thermal reservoir, the at this point, while you are trying, so in this step, heat is being transferred out of your engine, or sorry, pump, I think that's right. Outside is doing work, yeah, heat is being transferred out. So in order for this to happen naturally, meaning irreversibly, then you need to have your engine that's at a temperature higher than your thermal reservoir, so that your, sorry, engine pump can uh, bleed the heat into the reservoir. Let me check time. Okay, two minutes. <laughs> and on the other side, while you are doing, uh, while the heat pump is doing work on the system, it's uh, um, on this part, the heat is entering the engine, so the pump. So the temperature here has to be lower. So with the irreversible processes, what you are forced to do, uh, because um, with the irreversible, First, it will transfer of heat, the temperature of heat pump TH prime 
is greater than TH and the temperature of heat pump TL prime oops, is lower than TL. And uh, with these inequalities uh, accounted for the real um, coefficient of performance, it's uh, less than the ideal coefficient of performance. I skipped some steps because I have one minute left. Let's give it a try. So I've done this just so that um, I don't get kicked out uh, before <laughs> I put in all the part that will give me full credit. And I think I'm still going to get kicked out. Um, so I'm going to do the rest on the work here. Let's see. I have Kp is equal to Th over Th minus Tl. So I think it, it's easiest if I uh, divide by TH, so that I have 1 over 1 minus TL divided by TH. So this is the expression I have for the ideal Carnot heat pump. So for the non-ideal Carnot heat pump, I can actually use the same expression, more or less. What I have to change is what temperatures I use. Instead of my thermal reservoir temperatures, I have to use the heat engine temperatures or heat pump <laughs> temperatures. Uh, so 1 minus TL prime over TH prime. Um, so I'm trying to compare these two numbers. And so comparing them, let's see. I've said, uh, so from this picture here, TL prime is less than TL and TH prime is greater than TH. So the ratio, so the numerator is less and the denominator is greater. Yeah, so I can say TL prime over TH prime is less than TL over TH. Both of these effects are working in the same direction. So this being less, the whole this um, one, uh, let me do that. 1 minus this, this is uh, greater than 1 minus TL over TH. And <laughs> this uh, denominator being greater than what it, what's here, that means KP prime is less than KP. So that's the argument. But uh, yeah, that part, um, people seeing it for the first time, um, like, yeah, if, if you didn't immediately get it, that's fine. I think I spent some time uh, thought, thinking through it, and what you're seeing me in this session is me just uh, remembering <laughs> that argument I went through a long time ago. Um, so let me just uh, attach this for part D. Uh, part D. Yeah. And that question used to be a little bit more tricky. I was asking, like, uh, is the uh, coefficient of performance uh, for um, the realistic Carnot heat pump higher or lower? And the the thing I was trying to trick people into saying is because the you know, heat engine efficiency is lower, so my heat pump efficiency is higher, and it doesn't work that way. It's the thing about irreversibility. When you have one effect in one direction and you reverse it, <laughs> you can't just do that. <laughs> uh, so actually, even in this picture, so for heat pump, I drew the one for the realistic engine this way, if it had been heat engine, the realistic heat engine would have actually looked like this. On this side, it would have had to be lower, and on this side, it would have to be higher. So how the, what the correction looks like for the realistic heat pump versus heat engine, it's not the same. That's sort of what being irreversible means. When you reverse it, you, you might be able to reverse it, but it wouldn't reverse exactly the same way. So I think that um, covers, oh yes, yeah, we're going to continue. And uh, this is the logistics uh, uh, for the kind assessment. Um, you will always see 0% when you complete it because it has to be manually graded. And um, right now, there's no solution programmed in. And also, I think right now, you shouldn't be able to re uh, have any solution key thing anyway. Um, now, uh, I'm working on entering all the solutions into these questions. So uh, let me see if I can find this question. So this is where you would say, and the, um, when it says zero, so don't let that zero, uh, so here you don't see anything. <laughs> if you see zero anywhere, don't let that worry you until um, 
until you see a feedback from me. So th when I've graded everything, there should be feedback, and uh, that's when you know it's been graded. Um, and the work, if you didn't attach it while you are working on it, and I don't recommend that you do that, and depending on when you do it, if you do it right after, uh, if you are doing it close to due date, there might be some technical issues. You can always modify or add the additional work uh, at, when you come back. Like when you saw me refresh this, uh, this add work button appeared. And even I can't change any of these answers. These are meant to be uh, stay permanent, <laughs> whatever you had within the time limit, that's what they will be. And uh, the work though is what you can still change. So here, if I wanted to get rid of it, I could. I don't want to, but I could and just click on save work. Um, it will uh, timestamp when you last to change the work. So I usually don't really um, pay attention to that unless people are changing work after I've graded, um, in which case, you know, <laughs> you should communicate with me and we should work together. It's not, you can't just change the work after I've looked at it and graded it. So, so yeah, that's the demonstration of timed assessment. Um, you got two of these. Um, in addition to the multiple choice timed assessment that I demonstrated last week. So, good luck. And, uh, oh, and the thing that I was saying. Um, so, the, my goal is to, uh, let's see, actually, what was it? Was it this question? Uh, yeah. So, my goal is to have, and so, oh, wow, wait, did I type in the answers here? Uh, I typed in some of the answers. Wow. Okay. Um, it's possible I typed uh, in answers for all of them, which would uh, reduce some of my work. Oh, wow. Yes. Okay. <laughs> so I'll review what I have entered and what I haven't. Um, uh, yeah, I'll review that. Sorry. Because uh, uh, what I have to do for all the time assessment questions is I have to program in the answers that so that people can see. I might take out the wording answers vary. Um, but uh, yeah, it's because um, 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 I've changed the policy. The setting for this is it. Um, um, so it used to be that people could never see the correct answer. Like that's my default setting for almost all of these. Your for ho your homework definitely. But with the free from time assessment and actually multiple choice too, I had some rethinking and I decided to change the policy so that after the due date. So it won't be right after you submit it, it'll be after the due date and after your submission that you can see the answer key. So that um, it's mainly because I've been behind in grading so much. I think I want to give you the ability to tell for yourself how correct you are um, in the event, in the likely event I'm slow in grading. So, um, so that's mainly what that is. Um, so, so yeah, and and that's uh, necessary because uh, especially if I'm slow in grading, when you are doing this, you kind of have to work off of whatever you have before um, you have seen any um, you have seen any feedback from me for free form responses. And um, and I think I say you know evidence, objective, subjective. Did I say free form? Yeah, so if I have not yet graded from you, so uh, I made the solution available so that you, I can say this here. That's basically the whole reason why. Um.